Hi, this is AMI Day 17, and we're looking at corresponding parts and angles and looking at a sequence of transformations. And then we even have a challenge perimeter problem. So I'm going to go over transformations. There's four transformations. One is a translation that you're sliding the picture, the image. There is reflecting, which is a flip over a line. There is rotation, which is turning the uh, image. And there's dilation, which is getting bigger, or the picture is getting smaller. So those are the four transformations you'll be looking at to see what the picture is doing. And I also want to go over corresponding parts and kind of just explain what that means. So if you have a, um, a triangle, ABC, and these angles here, they which when you have a same image or a congruent image, which one of these corresponds with each other? Like A is the same as X, right? So those those um, angles are corresponding, and B and Y are corresponding, and C and Z are corresponding, all right? And we're talking about sides. We're talking about what is the same side of these. So these are just like pretty much a slide here. If you're just looking at it sliding over, so that J and K is the same in R is S, and M and L is the same as U and T. So those are called corresponding sides. So we have corresponding angles as well. So we're saying what angles are the same? Like if you put them on top of each other, where they match up, that's what I always like to think of, of a copy. Corresponding is like a copy. If you're matching up on top of each other, where would they match up? And so like E and L would match up, and C and J would match up, and we call those corresponding. So B and K, corresponding parts. Hope that helps a little bit. Um, so let's look at uh, our own problem of corresponding parts. And so before we can correspond, we um, we really need to know what is doing, um, like transforming. So like, what are we doing to these images to get to the next image? Like what transformations are taking place? So as you can see, it's kind of turned a different way. So I'm thinking it needs to be reflected. If I take this image, this red image, and I reflect it up, reflect it over the x-axis, you would have the the quadrilateral slanting in the same direction, right? This L right here would be on top and M would be on bottom slanted this way, just like the X and Y, all right? So that is reflecting over this X, X axis. And then for it to go right into the same spot, I have to translate, right? I have to slide it over. So if I'm picturing this, this is going, if I'm reflecting up, I'm going up to three, so I have to go one, two, three. That's where my L would be right here. And I would move it over one, two, three, four, five. It would be five places over to be on the X. So I'm going to go down here and put that in my answer before I do my corresponding parts for the two transformations where we are reflecting over the X axis. And then the second transformation, we are sliding, which is our translating, or translating, translation of five units after reflecting. All right. So you kind of, you've got to know what those are before actually doing to me these parts here. So look at L and M. Like I said, if L's at the very top, you kind of have to picture in your head, L and M is going this way, right? The, if we move this part up three parts, right? And we move our, our M up one part. So LM would match up with XY. Those are corresponding parts, X and Y. All right, look at our M and N here. If we reflect it up here, it would be right here, it would be this YZ. Okay, our NK. So our NK, if I moved it up one here, up one here, so our N's gonna be here, and I'm gonna slant back this way. That should be our WZ, right? Here's our WZ. All right, WZ, space. All right, and let's go down some more. Our LK, so this is our bottom part here. If we took it and I flipped it up, it'd be our top part up here, right? So that's gonna be our XW, our WX. X. W. All right, corresponding angles. Okay, so I think about where if I, when I reflect it up 
and I flip it over this x-axis and I slide it over, where would the k be? And we would be the same angle. So if I go up one, two, three, one, two, three, it would be the same spot and go over one, two, three, four, five, it would be in the same place as W. So I'm going to put W. All right. L, same thing. I'm going up three places here and then I'm going one, two, three, and moving over five places, it's going to be my X value. By M, I'm going up one, up one, and then sliding over five places, it's going to be Y. And then my N, I'm having a hard time seeing, there we go. Our N, if I go up two places and go over five places, one, two, three, four, five, it would be Z, it would be corresponding. All right, so there you go. Corresponding angles, corresponding lines. Um, so hope that helps you with today's question. For the challenge question, I kind of want to just cover that real fast. Um, we're talking about a perimeter of a triangle. And so uh, the perimeter is the outside, adding up all the edges and how much that is. So if I was going to take all these, this, um, they're all the same side here. So I would say that's 3x plus 3 equals. And then this side, adding all those up, they, I want to be x plus 3 plus x. Oh, that is x equals sign. x plus three plus x plus two x minus three, all right? So I'm putting those two equations equal to each other, setting them equal, finding the value of x, and then eventually finding the perimeter. So three x would be three times x plus three is three x plus nine, and that equals, and then I have to add on my x's. So I have one x, two x, three x, four x's. I have four x's all together, four x minus and now 3 minus 3 gives me nothing left over, so I just have 4x left. All right? So 3 minus 3 is 0. So I really just have 4x's on that side and 3x plus 9 on the other side. And so I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. I'm going to go down here, subtract 3x, do it on both sides, subtract 3x. Now I have 9 equals x. So that's the value of our x. 9 is equal to x. So I found our value of x. If we want to find the perimeter, I can just take one of these sides. So let's take our x plus 3 side. Well, let's see. If I take this, this x plus 3 and I put 9 in where x is, 9 plus 3, Oops, 9 plus 3, my computer. 9 plus 3 is equal to well, 12. And so if I put 12 in three times, because there's three sides, 12 times 3 equals 36. And so that would be the perimeter of that triangle. All right, I hope you have a great day.